Hi, and welcome back to another episode of Burlington Buzz. I'm your host, Charlotte Hancox, and today we'll be talking about housing. We'll also be sharing opinions from locals. With rising property values and a shortage of affordable housing, Burlington residents are feeling pressure to find homes that meet their needs. Our Catamounts on the Streets reporters Claire and Mia visited UVM campus to speak with students regarding their opinions on housing in Burlington. Thoughts on this? Wow. Awesome. Thank you so much, Charlotte. We are back today with Catamounts on the Street. Again, my name is Claire Montgomery, and today I'm going to be interviewing people about the hot topic of housing in Burlington and UVM. Let's go. Layla, today I'm going to be interviewing you about housing. So first, do you live on or off campus? I live off campus. I live off campus. Off campus. Technically, I'm off campus, but I live on the Redstone Commons. Okay, hey, awesome. Well, that was going to be my first question. So, what was your transition like from going from the dorms to the Redstone Commons? It was interesting for me because I went dorms, Pearl Street, and then the Commons. So, I kind of have like a mixture of like living everywhere, okay, like okay. on UVM, sort of. As far as the transition from off or on to off campus, mm-hmm. I feel like I kind of was supposed to do it all on my own. I know that the um, apartment process is really difficult and there isn't a lot of assistance for that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think people just don't really have an idea of when they should start looking. And so it's all a little overwhelming and confusing. It definitely was an adjustment, not living in the dorms, having to cook for myself was a big one because I'm very lazy, but it was fun. It was a, and I was here in the summer, so I think that helped when Lisa starts and Lisa starting in June helps kind of adjust to Burlington yeah. outside of school, yeah. which is cool. I think a really good transition, just yeah. having more space and like, mm-hmm. you know, going from one room together causes a little bit of conflict. But then there's other rooms, <laughs> so like you don't always have to be in one room together. You have a kitchen, yeah. you have a living room. Okay. It was interesting for me because I went dorms. Pearl Street and then the Commons so I kind of have like a mixture of like living everywhere like on UVM sort of yeah and what is the difference between living in the Commons versus downtown on Pearl Street honestly personally I think it's way safer living in the Commons (laughs) than living downtown um there were squatters in my basement last year um I, I felt really unsafe my roommates felt really unsafe but yeah Okay, and what was your experience the first time around signing the lease? Like, what was that experience like? It was really hard. I feel like here in Burlington, it's like impossible to get a lease because there's so many people signing and there's so many new students coming every year. So that was definitely tricky. My junior year, when I lived on Pearl Street, we had to sign months in advance and we couldn't even really look at any other houses. It was like the first house we found because there's nothing else yeah (laughs) luckily I had a friend who kind of led the charge and so I didn't have to do as much it was definitely hard finding a house and like getting the lease and like getting the money and making sure it was ours and I think it just it it felt very overwhelming yeah it was a little stressful I mean I'm trying to think back to it like it kind of worked out pretty fast Mm -hmm. but in the moment it felt really scary and hard and it felt like I was not gonna find a place I was really lucky that my parents have helped me out so much, but I know not everybody's privileged yeah. enough to, to have that assistance. So yeah. it would be really great if UVM was more supportive of that, especially because like we have to live somewhere. Exactly. <laughs> Where are exactly. we gonna go? Yeah. <laughs> and there's not a lot of space in Burlington for sure. So tell me about your apartment. Is it nice? Like how much do you pay for rent if you're comfortable sharing all that kind of stuff? Yeah, so since I live alone, I definitely do have more of a burden for rent, and I really do acknowledge that privilege that I have to be yeah. able to afford a place on my own. I'm very lucky. Um, I pay about seventeen seventy five mm-hmm. for rent. Okay, so we play, pay six fifty, mm-hmm. and then our other roommate pays. I don't know. Like 700 range because they get the one room and the parking space. Mm -hmm. But it's an apartment. It's super nice. I mean, it's nothing crazy. It's two bedrooms, one bathroom, but we have so many windows. It's really beautiful, natural light. And our landlord's great. They're very um, responsive to our issues. Redstone Commons, it's a little more expensive than like what you would find downtown. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say the Redstone staff is not very, like they will not answer 
your texts. Oh, okay. They have lost some of my packages. Oh, and gosh. I was just telling you that they moved our furniture third way into the year. Yeah. <laughs> but I think it's a very comfortable space. Like I feel more safe than I right, do right. than I did last year. Yeah. It's super close to the gym, which is really nice yeah. but those are like some pluses and some cons the state of my house is interesting um my wonderful roommate did clean it this week so it's it's clean but it, it's very hard to like with our busy schedules to kind of stay on top of stuff so it's very much like what you picture a college house just kind of falling apart um Bissonet owns it um which kind of a slum lord they at times have been very helpful to co they come very quick they fix a lot of stuff for us but also sometimes it's a struggle like that they charge us for things that we don't have control over but they it's so they're a mixed bag of things right. but it's i love the house i love our neighbors the neighborhood so yeah all right um my last question is do you think that uvm has a role to play in the housing crisis in burlington what have they done to further it and make it worse when thousand million percent they've accepted way too many students forcing who forcing students who should be able to have housing on campus to live off campus they also like have by they've built more housing for grad students when the city also really needs to prioritize housing for like people in need and they very much just it, it's just they're not very considerate of Burlington as a whole which can be a problem and they force a lot of students to live in problematic places and they don't have anything in place to help us so landlords can jack up the rent because they know we're in need of housing and like we're desperate because we can't live on campus so they put us in really awful positions that allows other landlords and people to take advantage of us as students and our age um, and our income which is yeah they're not great. I think so, definitely. I feel like they have been like overly admitting students yeah. over the years. My class was the biggest when I was a freshman, then like it just keeps on getting, the new classes keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And they keep saying that they're gonna do something about housing, but they're really like not yeah. doing anything. Yeah. So definitely, I think they definitely have something to do yes. with the housing crisis. I mean, I think they're over admitting students, so <laughs> there's just too many people. But I'm not saying to admit less students. Yeah. I think UVM should focus on building more affordable housing yeah. for students so they have more options mm -hmm. and Burlington families and community members like have their homes. They yes. don't, like students aren't taking them up. Yeah. We all need a place to go and live, and I feel really lucky mm -hmm. that I have the opportunity to do that. But there are a lot of people who have lived here for longer than I have. Yeah. Um, I'm just a student yeah. all the way from California that's like lucky enough to have this, and there are people who, who need housing probably a lot more than I do. Yeah. And so sometimes I just feel kind of frustrated that yeah. I'm in that position yeah. when other people aren't, you know? Yeah, I'm definitely the same, but I'm also a student in Burlington, so it feels super weird because I haven't been here that long, um, and it's definitely an issue, and I don't think it's necessarily, like, it is us, but it's definitely, I feel like, more UVM. Um, do you have any thoughts about what UVM can do about the housing situation in Burlington? I think that building new housing complexes, like the Catamount yeah. Run or whatever it's called by mm -hmm. Trader Joe's is definitely super helpful, like mm -hmm. Redstone Lofts and Commons. I think the issue with those, though, is that they're less attractive for people because they're not super far off campus near downtown and they are more expensive. But I think being able to like save these like community residential areas for people who are from here and live exactly. here would make a lot more sense and being able to have students like stay on campus yeah. but we keep over admitting so we can't really do yeah. that yeah. um so i definitely think that there's a lot more uvm could be doing on their part yeah. um just because the university is such a huge part of burlington i think there's a lot more the university could be doing for the people who live here Okay, well, thank you for sharing your opinions. Thank this was so awesome, me. and you'll see us on Catamounts on the Street. Thanks. Awesome. Well, that's all we have today for Catamounts on the Street. Back to you, Charlotte. Thank you, Claire. Reporter Kira interviewed Richard Kate, the CFO of UVM, to get his insights on how the university is impacted by Burlington's housing shortage. I'm Kira, um, and if you could just introduce yourself for the camera and for and like what you do for UVM. Richard Cade, I'm Vice President for Finance Administration here at UVM. And what is your involvement with UVM housing specifically? How do you work with them? 
in, in multiple ways. The, the first is I'm responsibility for, I have responsibility for all the facilities, all the buildings on campus. And so whether we're talking about a new laboratory building or a new residence hall or, or an apartment complex like these, um, I'm the one uh, that is ultimately responsible for working with my facilities folks in terms of the type of the building and then also uh, in determining where the money's going to come from and can we afford to do it, and yeah. that sort of thing. Um, what are your opinions on the housing crisis or basically what have you heard from the administration viewpoint on like how it's affecting students or just people in the community? Well, I, think, I think the first thing to remember is that the, the housing shortage is Vermont wide. It's not just Burlington, it's not just UVM. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the, the bottom line is that we have not been, not we the university, we actually have been building housing. but. In general, across the state, there hasn't been enough housing built to accommodate the additional people that are here, and also to accommodate the fact that every year there's a certain amount of housing just uh, is taken down because it's no longer uh, can be used. Um, going back for the last 30 years, the statewide data indicates that we are really at stasis. We're, you know, you take into consideration everything that's being built and look at how much is being taken offline and we're about net zero gain. Meanwhile, the population increases and, and there simply is not enough. Yeah, yeah. Is that, I guess, kind of what motivated UVM to build Cadmount Run in East or is it, that? Yes, yeah, in many ways. I mean, the bottom line is our students uh, did not have enough uh, housing off campus. Um, and so Catamount Run, of course, is designed uh, the first phase, at least, for uh, graduate students who are still looking at what we're going to do with the second phase. Um, we were not financially involved in Catamount East, but that is the reason that we leased, leased it in the first instance from the, from the owner, mm -hmm. uh, because we wanted to have some apartment-style housing um, that was available, and, and uh, so we went forward with that lease. Mm -hmm. And do you think the second phase will that include juniors and seniors, or is there not really a? We're, we're still yeah. we're still looking at that. Yeah. Still, yeah. And even in the first phase, we can have a small number of juniors and seniors. It's, mm -hmm. not, it's okay. primarily staff and graduate students. Yeah, and for red zone lofts, is that I know that's also kind of like you're not financially responsible for it, but how right. did that? So that? back in. Um, in 2000, I guess we started talking about it probably around 2009 or 10. It was built in 2012. Mm -hmm. um, at the time, uh, it was an opportunity to uh, not not spend money on housing, but to gain additional housing for uh, juniors and seniors uh, on the campus, um, and that has worked out very well. Mm -hmm. um, so it's a good uh, good arrangement there. And then, of course, uh, there. The apartments over there um, as well. It's a, another project that was that was goes back to the 1980s when that project. Was. Yeah. And do you experience or have you experienced with Camout Run like a shortage of people wanting to move it? I don't know if you. Know uh, no, there just... are some vacancies, but mm -hmm. um, it, um, but not a lot. Uh, and in those cases, it's just a matter of matching people. And there's also the fact that. It opened just before school started, so a lot of people felt, yeah. uh, you know, I think they felt, oh, we'd better get a lease lined up mm -hmm. early on. Yeah, uh, and yeah. So that's not unusual in the first year of the place, but, right. um, you know, some people obviously are concerned about the, the rental price, although it's at the market rate. For, yeah. It's just <laughs> at the market rate in the, in the community is pretty high. Yeah. But, uh, that's just a reflection of what it costs to build buildings. Uh, you know, there's no, there's no profit at all for UVM in any of this. It, it's um, all we're doing it at, uh, at the cost that what it costs us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely have heard a lot of people say like, oh, it's really expensive to live in like rent some lofts, but it honestly it comes out to the same price as living right. downtown. Like my rent just went up like one hundred and fifty dollars, which. I think it's a violation of our lease, but I don't really know. And it's, but. <laughs> you know, and it's a comparative quality. There's no comparison between uh, Catamount Run and most of what's downtown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I guess I kind of want to ask, like, does UVM have any, like, with the involved within the community, like, helping students find off-campus housing? Like, do you know about their role yeah. in that? Or? 
we have an office that assists students to some degree, but it is not directly involved um, in on a full-time basis in, in housing selection for juniors. Seniors that they're generally doing it on their own. Yeah. Uh, we we make available uh, information on the website and that sort of thing, but. Yeah. I, I think most students in today's technology probably are tracking it even more closely than we do. Huh? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, I guess my last question was, does UVM have like future plans to, besides Catmon running, I know those are still in the process, but like yeah. any other future plans? Are we're, we're looking at all the options. Uh, yeah. you know, we've talked to the city about zoning changes on certain sites uh, that are on mm -hmm. the campus as having potential for housing. Uh, that discussion is ongoing. Um, it's really going to be a matter of uh, what are the needs uh, and what students want to want to pay the price. They want to be in the uh, on the campus. You know, uh, some people. It's interesting. Some students very much would like to be on the campus. Others prefer not to. Yeah. Uh, it all depends. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we uh, are going to continue to. Look at all the options and try to make sure we can try to help students uh, as much as we can. Sounds good. Thank you so much for, for being here. Yeah, really appreciate it. Now, reporters Kara and Claire are sitting down with their roommates to discuss their current housing situations and how they've been managing living in Burlington. They'll also be taking us on a tour of their home to give us a closer look of how they've been managing living here. <gasps> Well, hello. Thank you, Charlotte. You see me in not my normal place. I am instead of on campus, I'm off campus in my off campus house. So why don't you follow me? All right. So to start, I'm going to sit down with my roommate, Rebecca Sullivan, who you have seen before on this show. And I'm going to ask a couple questions, not only about our house, but housing in Burlington. Let's go. Um, what is your favorite part about living off campus? Um, I would say the community. I think Burlington is so much bigger than I thought it was. It was really hard living on camp. Like, I think everyone tells, everyone expects, at least like UVM students expect, and the way like faculty makes it seem is that it's going to be really hard to like find community off campus. But honestly, like living on campus, not having a car, I felt so isolated and like I couldn't really like do anything. But living downtown has made me feel so much more connected with Burlington as a whole it has made me appreciate and like Burlington more I feel like I've explored more I I I really love it. I think the community and just the people like it really does feel like a small town a lot of the times because I will see the same people on the bus I'll see the same people out especially like being 21 and being able to go to like bars and things and kind of building community in that way has been really awesome and I think it's just like Burlington is so much bigger than UVM and living off campus has really shown me that and has allowed me to connect to that which I'm so grateful for because the people are what make Burlington and that's why I came here so I I like wanted a full whole picture education I didn't just want school so I feel like I have gotten that by living off campus. Okay, awesome. I thought of one more question that I'm going to ask. So obviously housing is a super hot topic, both at UVM and in Burlington in general. What role has UVM played in the housing crisis in Burlington? And what do you think moving forward they should do to help students like you who didn't know how to move off campus and other students that maybe aren't like you trying to find housing? Yeah, I think UVM is a huge part of the housing crisis. I mean, they've over admitted students by so much. There's a, we, were, we were just looking it up. There's so many more students. I don't remember the exact number, but so many more students here than when we were applying freshman year. Um, and even like before that, for, before COVID. So they've over admitted people. There's just not places. And they also, I mean, I don't know anything about like behind the scenes, but I don't think the faculty are like are advocating for us or working with any landlords bisonet anything like that off campus so these landlords are able to like as I said earlier like jack up the rent and take advantage of us and we don't have any support from our faculty and from like just from UVM as a whole um so that would be really nice to just have more I think Oscar is a really good the office for living off campus is a really great resource but 
that's kind of like the only thing I know about um and that's like more building community that's not about actual like housing um I yeah I think they just aren't helpful and they haven't helped and if anything they've pushed people off campus like now sophomores aren't even guaranteed housing which is really messed up because you should be guaranteed your first like we were guaranteed our first two years and that makes a lot of sense to kind of build a strong place here than to move off campus I think They've also focused, on, because of UVM, they focused on building grad housing, on transfer housing, but like those spaces, again, need to be affordable housing and not specifically like UVM, Redstone, like those huge companies, corporations. It needs to be housing also built by Burlington. And I think UVM needs to put more money in infrastructure, not just for the school, but for the community as a whole, because they have impact they have a really large impact on the community and it affects it a lot um and i think that's also burlington's job too i like i don't know all the behind the scenes details of like city council and housing and building infrastructure but i feel like i feel like i heard like freshman year that the huge lot that is like in around church street was supposed to be affordable housing and built at some point but that's taken my entire time here um but then catamount east went up in like a year so that's really crazy and i don't really understand how i don't really understand that how this one project has taken and like they've built the burlington school faster but like how this one project that's supposedly like affordable housing and maybe i'm lying maybe that's not right but that's what i think i heard is taking like four million years and that the crisis is getting worse and worse, but then like something owned by UVM is like up in a second. And even that is like so far off campus that that's not really helping anyone by having that still be like UVM specific residence, like residency. I don't know. I don't know exactly what the solution is, but I know that UVM isn't helping and making it worse. All right. Well, thank you so much, Rebecca, for adding your thoughts. And you will definitely see Rebecca Sullivan back on the show. So that's my house. And that was my roommate. Well, that's all for me today. Obviously, from off campus. Next time you see me, I'll probably be on the street. And back to you, Kira, who's also going to be giving you a house tour with their roommates. Hey, guys, I'm Kira. And this is my downtown off campus apartment tour. So right here we start at the back door come walking into our little dining room section really really cute some some chairs um we have a balcony right balcony like a, a porch a porch yeah a porch yeah some chairs out there it's kind of our own little area it's really cute um got baxter down here Yay. and our kitchen which is you know it's a little tight in here but that's okay <laughs> A uh, dishwasher, which is really, really cool. <laughs> they were not uh, in it. You know, recycling because we're really environmentally conscious. Microwave, uh, trash, refrigerator. Really cool. All right, come on in here. And we got the living room, which is a pretty nice size. Um, some natural lighting. You know, some exposed um, wiring in the ceiling. And we don't have <laughs> yeah um come a little bit over here <laughs> <Sorry. My> bathroom <laughs> yeah it's pretty cute you know um it's cow themed what more could you ask no window um which does it's a little moldy in here but we're just gonna ignore that <laughs> first roommate's room oh yeah and we pay about 900 per month for rent per room um and then utilities added are probably like like max 100 per month which isn't terrible and we split it between the four of us so that's pretty nice we have a long hallway oh there we go <laughs> <laughs> and a pretty big closet in here which is a little messy oh my god <laughs> big closet <laughs> you make the most use of the space yeah yeah Pretty cool. There's a blue wig in there. Uh, yeah, some games just for, you know, game nights. Pretty cool. And then this is our front door. Oh, <laughs> right over here is our front door. And this is second bedroom. I'm going to show the privacy in my roommate's room. But it's a pretty, pretty nice size bedroom. Come on in. Oh, 
come down over here. This is my bedroom and McKenna's bedroom, but we split it. Just a little preview. Yeah. It's pretty cool. And then we got our second balcony, which this is ours, but also anyone else in the apartment can um, get access to it. So I don't really it's know. true. I don't know why that's there. Um, thank you guys so much for coming to my apartment door. <laughs> my name is McKenna Sorensen, and I am a senior at UVM. Okay. So you've been living in this apartment for two years, right? Yes. Yeah. And what was the housing process like for you, like finding this off-campus apartment? It was very stressful, very stressful. I remember um, going through it with my friends and we were all just like frantically applying for everything that we found um, yeah. without really stopping to consider like quality or anything because it like, it was such a rush to try to get anything that it wasn't really about the actual apartment itself, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. And how long did that process come? Like, when did you start looking? I guess, like, when did it end? Um, I think it helped that we had gotten pretty good advice from some people that we knew to start really early. I know some people didn't start the process until, like, October. And I think that really limited their options. But we started right about in August, I'd say, when our sophomore year started. Um, and we were able to sign a lease by mid-September, mm -hmm. so we got out of the way pretty quickly. Yes. How many apartments did you look at until you found it? Um, it's hard to give an exact number because some of the showings only one of us could go to because the other ones were in class or just weren't available. So I'd say in total, we toured probably 10 yeah. 10 to 12 yeah. yeah yeah and how were the showings like how was the landlord and like how was how was it set up I guess a lot of them were combined showings with other groups and that was really stressful because we kind of got the impression that like one of these groups is going to get this apartment and so it made it feel very competitive um and I think that also kind of took away from the apartment itself like it was like okay, if it has enough bedrooms and it's, like, affordable, then we will just, we will just rent it right away. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And how much right now do you pay for rent, right, if you don't want me to ask it? Uh, in this apartment, we pay 900 a bedroom, um, but I split a room, so I pay half. I pay 450 And do you think, like, even if you weren't splitting a room, like, 900 per room, like, do you think that's kind of worth, like, the quality of what you're getting with the apartment? Uh, no, I don't. I know that 900 was kind of the standard when we first got this apartment. And since we rented it, it's now gone up to over a thousand a room. So we now are paying like some of the lowest prices in Burlington. But that being said, there are definitely issues with this apartment that I feel are not worth that amount of money. Like we don't have any sort of air conditioning. Our front door is not a, like, actual front door. It's, like, just, like, a residential door. Like, it's, it's not meant for that purpose. Um, and we don't have much space. And we're also just kind of, as time goes on, realizing that we're not in the safest area. Like, I think on paper, our area is very desirable because it's, like, close to downtown and it's close to campus. But as Burlington kind of transitions into a more unsafe state, we are realizing that we're a lot closer to that violence than we kind of thought we were. Um, so that's a little nerve wracking. Like, I think if you're paying for an apartment, like you're partially paying for the location and we have to worry about like our cars getting broken into and people breaking into our apartment and we had like a stabbing happen right next door and that's that all factors in and it's like I'm paying however much a month and I'm like scared when I go out my back door that like someone is going to be back there yeah so thank you for sharing that yeah that's yeah is there any advice that you would want to give people looking for apartments right now or just any like last comments you want to say yeah I mean I think it's hard to give advice that is super applicable, I think, because 
the housing crisis in Burlington is what it is. So it's, it's hard to tell people like, oh, avoid one area because options are so limited that a lot of people don't have that luxury of like, oh, I'll just live far away because they either don't have a car or it's more expensive or there just isn't options. So I think my advice would be that st to start early. I think that was the best advice that we had gotten because um, I think you have access to the most options and you're able to be the most picky when you start early. Um, whereas if you start late, you can end up in a un more undesirable situation than maybe you would have if you would have started earlier. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you, Kira and Claire. This week in Burlington, there's many fun events. On Wednesday, the Vermont International Film Festival is hosting the 2024 Vita Festival preview. On Saturday, head over to the Patrick Leahy Burlington Airport for the spooktacular Bach Party or check out the mountain bike film tour by Active VT. Finally, on Sunday is the Sweet Remains special album release at the Essex Experience. Thank you again for watching Burlington Buzz and see you next Monday.